Welcome back, everyone. This mini lecture is going to be about the Hall effect in the context of the Druda model. So let me just briefly remind you of the Hall effect. So let's imagine we have a two-dimensional sheet of a metal. Okay, it's not actually two-dimensional, but uh, the area, let's say, is much, much larger or the, the length and the width are much, much larger than the height here. Let's suppose we apply a magnetic field H perpendicular to the plane of this material. And then let's suppose we apply an electric field in the X direction here. This creates a current density in the X direction, Jx. Here are the X and Y directions here. Now, if you remember uh, the Lorentz force, in CGS units, that force is minus E over C V cross H. In SI units, of course, the force is minus EV cross B for electrons. Um, if we imagine that there's a current flowing along the positive X direction here, the electrons are actually flowing in the negative X direction. So you can't see this right now, but I've got my right hand out and I'm gonna use uh, uh, the right hand rule to figure out the direction of the force. So the electrons are traveling in the minus X direction. Uh, the magnetic field is in the positive Z direction. Um, I have to include the minus sign that's out in front because the electrons are negatively charged. I'll see that the electrons experience a force in the negative Y direction. So the positive charges will accumulate at uh, the positive y edge of this bar and the negative charges will accumulate at uh, the negative y face of, of this bar. So uh, let's try to compute what happens in this scenario in the framework of the Druda model. So we're going to compute two specific things. The first is something that we'll call the magneto resistance. call it rho, but we might expect that it should be a function of the magnetic field H. Let's define this as the ratio of uh, the electric field in the X direction divided by uh, the current in the X direction. So the, the electric field in the X direction is the thing that sets up the, the current J of X, which if you like causes the Hall effect in the first place. So we're going to compute how uh, the ratio of these two things, again, we'll call this the magneto resistance depends on uh, magnetic fields. And in general, we might expect that indeed it does depend on magnetic fields. The other thing that we're going to compute in the context of the Druda model is the Hall coefficient. We'll call this R sub H. Let's define this as the ratio between the electric field in the Y direction and the current in the X direction. So remember our bar here has positive charges on the plus y edge and minus charges on the minus y edge. Here's the magnetic field. Uh, so eventually an electric field in the y direction will build up in response to the initial current in the x direction. And again, because this is mediated by the Lorentz force, we again expect that this might be um, linearly dependent on the external field h. Uh, so let's divide that out here from our expression for, for the Hall coefficient. So we're gonna compute these two things, the magneto resistance rho, uh, which is the ratio of the electric field in the X direction divided by, uh, which is the ratio of the electric field in the X direction to the current in the X direction. And we're gonna compute the Hall coefficient, uh, which is the ratio of the electric field in the Y direction to the product of the current in the X direction and the magnetic field. And this might depend on the magnetic field, but we're going to expect that it doesn't, again, because we've explicitly divided it out uh, in, in the denominator here. 
Um, so one thing to keep in mind is that the sign of RH depends on the sign of the charge carrier. So you might have heard of things like holes, electrons and holes, uh, which can carry current. Holes are effectively positively charged particles. Uh, we won't talk about these now. We'll come back to this when we talk about band structure. Um, but if the current is predominantly carried by electrons, we'll expect a Hall coefficient of one sign. And if the current is predominantly carried by positively charged carriers, we would expect Hall coefficients of, of the opposite sign. All right, so that, if you like, sort of foreshadows some of the usefulness of the Hall coefficient experimentally. One can use measurements of this uh, to determine the, the sign of the effective charge carriers in the material. All right, so to compute these quantities, uh, we're going to compute, or we're going to rather use the equation of motion uh, that we um, derived in the last minute lecture. Remember that in the Drudel model, the equation of motion of momentum for the electrons dp dt uh, is equal to the external force F, which might depend on time, minus P over tau, uh, where tau again is the relaxation time. So in the context of the Hall effect, we can identify the external force F as the sum of the force resulting from the applied electric field E and the Lorentz force. I'm going to write it like this. So the first contribution here is from the electric field that we've applied to induce the current. This is now uh, the Lorentz force. So I've written the velocity of the electrons B as the momentum P divided by the mass of the electrons. Uh, since we're working in two dimensions here, Let's decide that the electric field has an x component and a y component. So ex, x hat plus ey, y hat. The sum of these two things is equal to the total electric field E. And we'll decide that the magnetic field points in the z direction. And uh, it has magnitude h. So now let's plug this force into our uh, equation of motion from the Judah model. So dp dt is equal to uh, the sum of the external force and minus p over tau. Here is the external force that we just wrote down. Let me now substitute in uh, the expressions we just wrote down for the electric field and magnetic field. And let me expand out the cross product here in terms of the x and y components of momentum, px and py. Let's see. All right, um, so we're going to again ignore the z direction as we have implicitly done um, in specifying this form of the electric field. And we're going to require an equilibrium that the time rate of change of the x component of momentum and the time rate of change of the y component of momentum are equal to zero. And uh, this will define steady state. So now we can break up the equation that we just wrote down for dp dt into two equations for dpx dt and dpy dt and set them both equal to zero. So let's do that. So for the x direction, we have zero must be equal to minus e times the x component of the electric field minus e 
h over mc times py minus px over tau. And for the y direction, we have something that looks similar. Good. So now we have two equations. Uh, let us, to make our lives a little bit easier, define the cyclotron frequency. Omega C is equal to EH over MC. Uh, this frequency will come back again and again in this course, so it's worth remembering this. So the equation for the x direction then becomes zero is equal to minus E EX minus omega C PY minus PX over tau. For the y direction, zero is minus E EY plus omega C PX minus PY over tau. Good. Uh, to simplify this even further, we can remember that J is minus NE times the speed of the electrons V, their velocity V. Uh, this is equal to minus NE P over M. So this means that the momentum P is equal to minus MJ over NE. Right, eventually we want to compute ratios of electric fields to current densities. Uh, so we'll substitute in this expression for the momentum here uh, uh, so that we get a little bit closer to that goal. Um, so we're gonna substitute P is equal to MJ over NE and we're gonna multiply by Ne tau over uh, m. You'll see why in just a second. Uh, so the equation for, I need a minus sign here, uh, the equation for the x direction looks like e, uh, e times Ex times Ne tau over M. So here I brought uh, the minus E, EX over to the left-hand side of the equation. So it's not, the left-hand side is no longer zero, but uh, uh, positive E, uh, uh, EX. And here I've multiplied again by Ne tau over M. Uh, remember that Ne squared tau over M is the due to conductivity. So I'm gonna denote this by sigma naught EX. So here sigma naught will be uh, the due to conductivity that we computed earlier. Now, uh, the right-hand side of the equation is equal to plus omega c tau jy plus jx. And for the y direction, we have e, ey, and e tau over m is equal to sigma naught ey. This is minus omega c tau jx plus jy. So again, uh, and going from the last set of equations to this one, I've moved uh, the terms containing minus e times the components of the electric field over to the left-hand side. Um, I've substituted in this expression up here for the momentum so that all of the momenta now appear as uh, current density is j. Uh, and I've also, of course, multiplied the right-hand sides by an e tau over m. Again, I'm using sigma naught to refer to the Druda conductivity we computed earlier. Uh, the, subscript, the subscript zero here is supposed to indicate that this is sort of the basic Druda conductivity. After all, we're calculating things like magneto resistance here. Um, so that will, will serve to, to, to set that apart. Good. All right, so we're almost there. Uh, the other thing we should require for equilibrium is that the current density in the y direction is equal to zero, uh, right? This means that uh, the charges have reached their maximum extent on either sides of the bar and now the built-in electric field 
from the Lorentz force uh, is canceled exactly by the electric field of the displaced charges. So with this in mind, uh, with, with Jy equals zero in equilibrium, we can look at our first equation and see that sigma naught Ex is equal to Jx. All right, our second equation tells us that sigma naught Ey is equal to minus omega c tau Jx. All right, the first equation shows us that the magnetoresistance, which is one of the things we set out to calculate, which is the ratio of Ex and Jx, you see that this is exactly equal to one over sigma naught. It's just the bare Judo resistivity. One thing that's possibly interesting here is that it's constant. It does not depend on the magnetic field. So even though the Lorentz force is deflecting the electrons in the y direction, uh, the ratio of the electric field to the current in the x direction remains constant at uh, the basic Judo value and it's independent of magnetic field. So this is, this is somewhat surprising. Uh, let's also compute uh, the Hall coefficient. So let me write down our equation for the y direction here. Sigma naught EY is equal to minus omega C tau Jx. Uh, the Hall coefficient, remember, is EY over Jx times H. Okay, so you can see that this is equal to minus omega C tau over H sigma naught. So let's expand this out. So this is minus EH over MC. That's the cyclotron frequency. Let me keep tau over H here. And one over sigma naught is M over NE squared tau. So simplifying this through, you see that this is minus one over NEC. So the Hall coefficient, which is the ratio of the electric field in the y direction to the product of the current density in the x direction times the magnetic field is constant. It does not depend on magnetic field. Uh, this is perhaps not so surprising because after all the Lorentz force is linear in the magnetic field and we've divided this out. Um, one of the perhaps even more surprising things about this is it does not depend on tau. So this is a specific prediction of the Judah model, but it does not depend on the relaxation time tau. So even though we invoked it to derive this result, it canceled out uh, in, in the end. Uh, and so this, it will turn out, is actually one of the most useful features of the Judah model in practice. Um, this is actually a very common way to extract uh, the density of electrons in a system, uh, and that's by measuring the Hall coefficient. And you see that the uh, end result does not depend on the relaxation time tau. Uh, and indeed, for many metals, uh, this expression Rh is minus one over NEC is true uh, to a very good uh, approx approximation. So this is indeed one of the triumphs of uh, this is indeed one of the triumphs of the Judah model. Uh, so this is the Hall effect in a nutshell, and uh, we'll return next time to discuss some other features of, of the Druid.